The Fine Art Gallery, founded in 1988 in the capital city, is focused on promoting power of African American art. Yeah, our Dorothea Wilson joins us live this morning from the Hearn Fine Arts Gallery to share a little more about what they're doing for Black History Month. Good morning, Dorothea. Good morning, Hillary. Good morning, Claire. What a great way to celebrate Black History Month. Then with this beautiful art, fine art gallery with owner, director, woman of the hour, Miss Garbo Hearn. Now, Miss Hearn, tell us about this beautiful, not museum, fine arts gallery. Well, Pyramid Art Books and Custom Framing and Hearn Fine Art, we focus on black culture through literature and the fine arts. And we recognize uh, local, regional, national, and international art and authors. Nice, awesome. And such a great, rich history here. Their books, poetry, art, so many different things. Now, what can people expect to see when they come in here? Will they just walk into just cultural richness? Well, you'll come in and you'll see so many books. We have all genres of books. Um, we always have an exciting exhibition as we have here. It's a Breath of Fresh Air, which is an exhibition of uh, fired clay sculpture by Chooks. Nice. So he's actually here today, so you'll get awesome. to see him later on today. Awesome. And in the second gallery, we have Rex Deloney and Matthew Fields. So those are both Arkansas artists. Nice. Well, we're excited to see everything that this beautiful place has to offer. Now tell people your hours of operation. How can they get here? All that good stuff. Okay, so we're located in the historic Dunbar neighborhood neighborhood on the corner of Wright and Chester at 1001 Wright Avenue. We're open Monday through Friday from 10 to 5 and Saturdays 10 to 6 and Sundays by appointment or we sometimes have special community activities. So we're here all the time. Nice. I love it. Well, you guys stick with us. There's so much more to see in this beautiful place and we're excited to see an artist that came all the way from California, but he does have Arkansas roots. In the meantime, you guys, back to you. Good morning, Mr. Williams. Now, I am here at this beautiful art gallery and I'm with one of the artists who is responsible for this beautiful sculpture, these beautiful sculptures that you're seeing before you right now, Mr. Chutes. Now, Mr. Chutes, tell us, how did you first get into art? Well, I started playing in mud in my <laughs> parents' backyard and it just uh, developed to the first time I was introduced to clay in the fifth grade and from that point on it just changed my entire life. I didn't uh, find clay, clay found me. Awesome, I love that. Sometimes our passions do find us. Yeah. We're in the right place at the right time. Now, he has a wide array of different things. I know you're seeing it right now on your screen. Tell us about this one right here. Uh, this, this, what's the inspiration behind that yeah, one? Yeah, this piece is titled Garden of Eden, and this is what my Garden of Eden looks like. I mean, historically, we see Garden of Eden um, as certain depictions, but I wanted to depict it to something that represented who I was and where I came from in the beginning of uh, humanity. So this is what the Garden of Eden looks like in my, in my mind. Awesome. I love it. Now, I understand that you are also an author, and we do have that book displayed right here if you want to take a look. It's called Identity Theft. Now, tell us the inspiration about your book. Yes, this book is very important for me. I wanted to write my own history, so I've written the book, I have taken the photographs, and of course, all the art in the book is my work. Uh, this is a depiction of the history that is not being told and taught. In, in, in our uh, schools and just throughout uh, civilization. So I wanted to go back and show how I traced my history and show you that I'm using my art as my tool to tell the truth about who I am and hopefully that'll be uh, an insight for helping people to find their history and find the truth about themselves as well. Awesome. Well, thank you for that. Thank you for these beautiful bodies of art in your book. And you guys, if you want to stop by and take a look at some of the fine art that's being in dis displayed by Shoots or Chuck. Chooks. Chooks. Yeah. I want to say shoot. I think that's that Louisiana, that shoot, but it's Chooks. You guys, we're right here in the downtown, not downtown, we're in the historic Dunbar District, right here in the capital city. Back to you guys. Good morning. Yes, what a great way to honor black history by just being in this place filled with culture, filled with history. Now, this is a place that creatives from all over the area and beyond can really express their unique talents and their unique gifts. Now, I am here with one of those creatives and her name is Paula Rogers and she is the CEO of Paula's Stuff. And you guys, 
boy does she have a lot of stuff now she creates customized note cards now miss rogers what made you decide one day i want to make note cards well it was a process i love giving a card making them and giving to my friends mm -hmm. and i found that every time i gave a card they kept it every <laughs> They never get rid of it. They just love them. And so everyone was, you know, go to New York or someplace. I saw some things that looked like yours. And th my friends encouraged me to, you know, why don't you get this out to the public? And so that's, that's how we began this process. I said, well, let me try to get them out because if I want to give something that people will cherish, then someone else wants to give something to someone for them to cherish awesome. and just continue that role. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, we love that. And I see you have a, a line of various different, what is that, titles and various different types of note cards. Tell us a little bit about your line. So we've got several lines. Um, my Black Love line is one of the uh, everybody's favorite. And Valentine's Day is kind of pretty special right now. But that Black Love, it's... Um, they are made with wax and I use different fabrics and just different materials. I paint the paper wow. and I blend all of the colors and so that's how the, we do hearts and love and wax seals and things like that that uh, make them stand out. We have a breast cancer, I'm a two-time breast cancer survivor wow. and so I like um, sharing the love of people gave me cards and when I was going through what I was going through and so people can do the same. I have thank you cards and this is a special one. Uh, this is my hanky line mm -hmm. and oh my god people love uh, giving um, the sympathy card that has a hanky inside of it. Okay. Well, I love that. And she has a beautiful poem that she wrote. And you guys, we're going to be here all morning. We'll be back within the next 30 minutes. But I definitely want you to come down in the historic Dunbar district and check out some of Paula's stuff. In the meantime, Hillary, Claire, DJ, back to you. Good morning, Claire, and good morning, Hillary. What a great way to honor Black History Month than to be in this historic, beautiful, fine art gallery. Now, this is a place where creatives from all over the area can really come and express their unique art and talents and gifts in one place. And I'm here with one of those unique people, yes. and this is Miss Mary Haskins, and she is an author. Now, one special thing that I was truly inspired okay. by, by this lady, is she is recently retired from the Department of Justice, and she is just fascinating. Now, Miss Haskins, can you please tell us how you got started into writing children's books? Oh, it was a wonderful uh, opportunity to be challenged. Mm -hmm. So I got started actually in this bookstore, wow. coming in searching for a book, and Garpo Hearn challenged me to write the book that I could not find. Wow. So in one of my uh, online things, I said I looked and looked mm -hmm. and couldn't find the book. Mm. So then I was challenged to write the book. So I like to challenge students also to do the same thing, to write their stories. Awesome. Now, yeah. what a great story. She could not find what she was looking yeah. for, so she decided to make what she was looking for. And I also mm -hmm. love very much that her illustrations in her book are by local Arkansas artists. Absolutely. What made you do that? Yeah, intentionally. Mm -hmm. Yes, I wanted to, as I'm an Arkansas author, mm -hmm. I wanted to highlight Arkansas artist. Mm -hmm. So every book is a work of art. Wow. And so either they're from Arkansas, but they have an Arkansas connection. Mm -hmm. uh, and so each, each one, there's a different illustrator for every book and mm -hmm. people enjoy reading the story, but also gathering and intaking the art from many different mediums, from uh, watercolor, uh, down home in Arkansas, it's all on wood. Wow. You know, Rex Deloney's uh, work in this book is watercolor, uh, oil painting, acrylics. So it's a lot to, for students to learn in the process of talking about the stories. Awesome. Well, yeah. I love that. And thank you for creating what you couldn't see and caused people like me to be able to see it. Thank Wonderful. you for what you do. Hey, you thank guys, you so much. It's been a great, no problem. It's been a great time. There's so much rich history in this place. You've got to visit the historic Dunbar area and stop on by this fine arts gallery. Back to you guys.